Hello, welcome back. In part four of this series, we'll update our sample application to incorporate the new Elastic Beanstalk Worker tier. If you haven't seen the first three videos in this series, they are linked below in the description. So what is a worker tier? Worker tier is an Elastic Beanstalk environment type that is optimized to handle background processing of tasks generated by your applications. Examples of some tasks you might want performed in the background could include sending email, generating reports, or resizing images. By offloading background tasks to a worker environment tier, you free up the web application in your web server environment to handle web requests. Let's focus in on two key words here. First, tasks. Currently, Worker Tier supports handling tasks from an Amazon SQS queue. SQS is a fast, reliable, scalable, fully managed message queuing service. You can learn about SQS at the URL on the screen. So if you wanted to send an email as a background task, for example, your application would put a message in an SQS queue indicating the recipient and message content. The second word we'll emphasize is handle. When you configure your Elastic Beanstalk Worker Tier environment, you indicate the SQS queue that will store your tasks and a corresponding HTTP path that those messages should be sent via HTTP POST. You should then write web app code to handle these posts using the languages, frameworks, and patterns you're already familiar with. The application we built in the first three videos allows our customers to sign up to be notified when our new product is available. They click the Sign Up Today button and complete a form with their email address. The latest version of our application, available on GitHub, stores the customer's sign-up information in a database table and on queues a message into SQS so we can send them a confirmation email later on. We can navigate to the SQS management console and see that my app has unqueued a message for my sign-up waiting to be processed. It's a JSON message and includes the email address and name that I provided in the form. You can see the GitHub project for the latest version of the sign-up form app and the first video in this series for instructions on how to deploy it. Now let's look at a simple app for Elastic Beanstalk Worker Tier to handle this task by sending a confirmation email to the customers. The app for our Worker Tier is separate from the front end for the sign-up form. It's available on github.com slash AWS Labs. The full URL is also on the screen and in the description below. And the code is really simple. I have application.py that has one method, customer underscore registered. You can see from the decorator that this method handles HTTP POST requests to the slash customer dash registered path. In a few moments when we deploy the app to our worker tier, that's the path we'll tell the worker tier to forward messages to. We've written this code to expect JSON messages as the content type. If the content type isn't application JSON, we return the appropriate HTTP error code, 415 in this case. Otherwise, we parse the name and email properties out of the message and use the Amazon Simple Email Service to deliver an email to the customer. It's important to note that you must use a verified email address as the sending from address. To learn more about this or about Amazon SES in general, see aws.amazon.com SES. Otherwise, we return an empty response with a 200 OK status code, telling the worker tier we handled the message. It will take care of deleting the message from the queue so it isn't processed again. If an exception occurs, we return an error message and a 500 status code. This will allow the worker to retry the message later on so it isn't lost. Let's deploy our worker tier app. Download the release zip from GitHub. We'll need to unpack the zip file so we can set one configuration value in the default underscore config.py file. Set the source email address property to the email address you verified with the Amazon SES service. Now recreate a zip from the modified source and navigate to the Elastic Beanstalk Management Console. I'll create a new environment alongside the signup form, choosing Worker, Python, and Single Instance. I'll upload the worker code I just modified and packaged and give the environment a name. I don't need additional resources. In configuration details, it's important to note that the instance profile I choose has permissions to SQS and SES. There is a sample policy available on GitHub and you can view the first video in this series for details on the instance profile option. In worker details, I'll choose the existing queue that was created by the signup form web app we deployed earlier. You also have the option of letting EB create a new queue for you. I set the path to customer-registered and the MIME type to application JSON, both as my app expects them to be. Finally, review and deploy the app. All right, the environment is green, which means my worker app is up and running. 
That message we saw in the queue earlier should now have been processed and removed by our worker. Let's check. Great, it's gone. We can also look at the logs for our app to see how things are working. In this specific example, we use the worker tier to send emails to our customers asynchronously. Although sending an email isn't the most resource intensive task when compared to image processing or report generation, for example, deferring the work allows our front end application to easily scale out, providing a fast, reliable experience to our customers. Consider parts of your applications that could benefit from background task processing and give the Elastic Beanstalk free tier for both web and worker tiers a try. Give us your feedback on Twitter or the AWS forums. As always, thanks for joining us.